Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Xia Chunbing. Welcome to my talk on solving the data center energy crisis with silicon photonics. This is my bio data. I'm a test technologist at the Form Factor Probe System Business Unit. I have a PhD in RF design and modeling. Uh, my research interest is uh, all kinds of wafer level tests and measurements. The outline of my talk will cover the following topics. First, we're going to look at how silicon photonics can solve the data center energy crisis. We're going to understand why we need accurate and reliable wafer level photonics test. We're also going to look at how form factor solution can address the emerging photonics test challenges. Um, this is the future communication landscape with 5G uh, widely deployed. So uh, with 5G, we expect a thousand times higher mobile data volume at about 100 times higher data rate. So we have so many devices connected to the wireless network, to the base station, and all this data has to go back to the data center. So with 100 billion devices connected to the 5G network, uh, having data rate of 10 gigabit per second wirelessly. So of course we have to make sure that uh, the data center uh, is able to handle such kind of uh, high data volume as well as high data rate. So we are expecting um, optical interconnects within data centers communicating between switches and servers to be upgraded accordingly. Other than 5G, uh, this slide shows some wonderful applications uh, that is really driving the strong need for high performance network and data centers. We have Internet of Things. We also have uh, video transcoding, right? Uh, that is the study of uh, compression algorithm uh, to allow high quality video to be transmitted across the Internet uh, in a very energy efficient and fast manner. So this technology is particularly important, uh, especially when we are going through this crisis where everybody is working from home and trying to have uh, meetings with clients and uh, colleagues through the internet. We also have a genomics revolution, uh, whereby the study of genes and diseases and trying to extend the uh, lifespan of human beings. So we can see many wonderful applications here. And with that, uh, we really need uh, the high performance network and data centers for all these applications to work to help improve our lives. To have high performance uh, network and data center, the uh, data rate or the speed is not really the main challenge. The main challenge here is to reduce the energy consumption. So in a typical uh, data center, if you look at the power usage, 40% actually goes to the uh, servers and switches. 40% on cooling all these uh, IT equipment. The remaining 20% is uh, to power the uh, data center itself. Right. So uh, there are analysts uh, predicting that by 2030, 20% of the world's energy produced will be consumed by information technology. So why is information technology? Uh, if you look over here, it uh, really consists of the, uh, the network, uh, both wired and wireless the data centers, the consumable devices, and also the production of uh, all these uh, communication technology. So we see that a large portion uh, is being taken up by networks and uh, data centers. And in order to solve this energy crisis, uh, we need to address uh, this uh, energy uh, consumption going forward. So how do we solve this uh, energy crisis? Uh, we are going to replace copper wires in data centers and uh, industry buildings, offices, and homes uh, with optical fibers. Uh, optical fiber communication is really uh, not something new, right? It has been around for many years uh, in undersea cables uh, laid between uh, countries over vast distances to establish uh, communication links. 
So uh, why replace copper wires with fibers is really because of power efficiency. So we get about 50 times improvement and over 1000 times improvement in the uh, range uh, for which the data can travel. So here you see an optical fiber with two uh, optical transceiver uh, modules uh, forming an optical link. So if you look at the history, uh, in the past, uh, such kind of optical transceiver is made by discrete three fine components and they actually consume uh, quite a high power of about 24 watts. So as technology evolves, we see that the, uh, both the miniaturization of these transceiver modules as well as the reduction in the power required to operate them. Okay, if we peep into the integrated silicon photonics uh, module, uh, this is typically what we will see. So we see that uh, there's a, a, a module uh, with the optical transceiver chipset. Uh, this chipset is manufactured by a heterogeneous 3D IC integration technology. Uh, moving back into the uh, manufacturing process, uh, the typical starting wafer is uh, actually a photonics wafer. Uh, all the photonics component is being laid down, for example, the optical waveguide, the uh, optical modulator, photo detectors, they are being formed onto this base wafer. They are tested and making sure that they work properly. Uh, the subsequent uh, expensive uh, electronics IC, typically of a very advanced node, uh, which handle all the data encoding and decoding will be uh, bonded on the, the good uh, photonics style. So you can see here, there's a missing electronics die, meaning that uh, the photonics die is not working well. Here's another example. Then uh, the subsequent step is to have the uh, continuous wave uh, laser diode onto the silicon photonics die, right? And then we have the fiber array aligned and fused onto the die. So this forms the uh, uh, optical transceiver module. So it is important uh, that uh, test engineers must have a very reliable and accurate and repeatable wafer level photonics uh, test solution, right? To uh, have uh, uh, the ability to perform no good die test at every step of the manufacturing process. Uh, this slide shows the various components that form an accurate integrated wafer level photonics test solution. So first of all, we need the optical uh, test instruments and of course the test software, right? Uh, we need a probe station, uh, preferably with a, a wafer loader because uh, this type of uh, silicon photonics wafer, they are very expensive. So you do not want to have uh, human handling. Uh, RF probes, calibration substrates, uh, DC probes uh, in order to test the uh, devices, software for optical positioners and the probe systems, uh, the optical uh, positioner which consists of a six axis uh, positioners with the uh, piezo electric uh, positioner in order to have uh, enable very high speed uh, fiber to coupler alignment. So with all these uh, components we uh, form an integrated wafer level photonics uh, test solution. Managed test challenges has to be overcome in order to achieve an accurate and repeatable photonics wafer level test solution. Now, uh, on this slide, I want to go through some of these test challenges. The first one, obviously, is integration. It is such a complex system, right? So it requires multiple parties to work together, for example, form factor for the probing key site for the test instrument and PI for providing the optical uh, positioners, right? So uh, we have to come together uh, in order to allow for fast, accurate fiber alignment and measurements. And most importantly, the time to the first set of good test data. So with a proven solution, uh, we can achieve this in days after the system is being installed instead of months trying to get the first set of good measurements. So here is an embedded video showing how fast the fiber can align to the grating coupler and uh, what we are trying to test is actually an optical waveguide. The next challenge is calibration. Now because we are trying to 
uh, make very uh, difficult measurements in terms of the fiber incident angle and you are using a six axis uh, uh, optical positioners in order to also be able to handle not just single fiber but fiber array so the software uh, must be able to handle all the detail XYZ calibration of the fiber and fiber arrays and also not forgetting the displacement Z sensor where we are able to accurately control the fiber hovering height above the wafer when we do the test. The next is actually to optimize the photonics test setup. Uh, for example, the fiber height and the fiber incident angle. So all these has to be properly optimized in order uh, to have a very repeatable test, especially in the production environment. Uh, the ability to validate the system performance uh, that is highly critical uh, for example the time to align the fiber the coupling uh, repeatability and the alignment repeatability across the wafer so this is uh, very important and we actually have scripts and a test routine written into our uh, calibration software to allow test engineer to perform this uh, in a matter of a few clicks of buttons uh, designing for test is also very important so we have worked with uh, customers to establish layout design rules and also fiber arrays uh, having fiber arrays DC and multiple uh, contact probes and being uh, one of the pioneers uh, in RF probes and calibration so we are in a very good position and uh, to advise customer how to design for test uh, you can refer to our 2020 uh, IEEE ICMTS paper which uh, outline uh, all these test challenges uh, in greater detail uh, and they are available for download on our uh, website. Uh, to conclude my talk, uh, I would like to re-emphasize that silicon photonics is the solution to solve the data center energy crisis. Uh, simply because it's so much more power efficient uh, to transmit data over fibers compared to copper wires. Uh, going forward, we will see a huge deployment of silicon photonics, not just in optical transceivers, but also as switches in data centers. We have also uh, seen that wafer level non die test is critical for successful uh, silicon photonics 3D IC heterogeneous integration. Uh, Form Factor has presented a market leading solution uh, to help uh, with solving of this data center energy crisis. Uh, with that, I would like to conclude my talk. I thank you for your time. Uh, if you have any question, uh, please feel free to drop me an email. Uh, you can also uh, scan the QR code and add me on LinkedIn. Uh, be also happy to take questions uh, over LinkedIn. Uh, thank you very much for your time and have a wonderful day ahead.